I was in Alaska this last winter, which is quite a lot going for it if you're into stark wilderness. Lots of snow and lots of trees. Until you get up north where these trees stop. After the barren north slope disappointed my expedition plans, I looked for other opportunities. So instead of doing that novel route up on the North Slope, I'm down here in the south of Alaska and as you can see it's not particularly disappointing scenery and it's here that I'm going to try and delve into various different aspects of campcraft, uh, clothing, equipment choices and some techniques which will hopefully be interesting and informative for as many of you as possible. For others it'll just be an opportunity for you to complain about the way that I do things and to come up with your far far better ways. Aside from ski touring in the more mountainous Alaskan south and interior, I thought I'd stop every now and again to share a few thoughts with my ever patient YouTube audience. And so here we are. Plastic bags scandalously moonlighting as vapour barrier liners. Right then, you're probably wondering why I've only got one ski pole. And that's because my camera that you're currently looking at me through is on my other ski pole. Because as I showed you in another video, I have actually attached a camera mount to the top of one of my ski poles, which is quite nifty. There are two sorts of people. There are people who have never heard of a VBL, a vapour barrier liner, and there are those who have. Everyone who has will have an opinion on VBLs, normally quite a strong one. And so what I'm going to try and do today is explain my use of VBLs, why I think they're fantastic. Uh, they can be finger saving, toe saving, possibly even life saving. Um, and I consider them to be an integral part of all of my Arctic high latitude cold weather shenanigans that I get up to and I have them in all sorts of different places. My three main areas of VBLs are, one I'll show you later, uh, in my sleeping system, so inside my sleeping bag. Uh, that has its critics in some people, but I'll explain my reasoning why. And I also have them around my other two sets of most uh, at-risk extremities, uh, my toes, my feet of course, and my hands, and in particular my fingers. So I'm going to start off with my fingers and underneath these mitts, which by the way have been modified, practically everything that I've got has been modified and I'll quickly show you what I've actually done with those. Uh, today we're in southern Alaska, it's quite a clear day, it's about, I think it was minus 24 when, we, when I woke up and it's about minus 20-ish now, so not a particularly cold day, I don't need to wear uh, full face protection and there's practically no wind, so that's all rather pleasant. However, underneath these mitts I have, unsurprisingly, some liner mitts. Nothing particularly controversial going on there. I will just quickly show you these. Uh, these are actually normal uh, mixture of synthetic and uh, goose down uh, mitts. They're not the heaviest, biggest ones you can buy, but they're towards the upper end. Uh, they're made by, uh, made by Mountain Equipment. I think they're from their red line range. What I have done is extended them using some ripstop nylon here with a drawstring at the end. And that gives me an extended sleeve, meaning that they end quite a good way up my sleeve and that means I can completely exclude wind and also I find it's much much easier to get them on and off. What I find you can get with mitts, particularly ones that end there, is that they get caught on the end of your, your jacket or smock cuff and you end up with basically a gap, whereas this means I guarantee really good overlap. So these were a good, a good addition. There's no insulation here, this is simply to stop airflow uh, running up into the mitt and of course if you get cold wrists you tend to get cold fingers, which is, no good, which is not good news. To my fingers and obviously you can't do lots of intricate, delicate work with these big mitts on. These are just for really gripping onto a set of poles and keeping warm during the day and sharing heat between your fingers. What you do need sometimes is a little bit of dexterity and so for that you do need lighter gloves. Now of course, if you're working hard, even if you're just standing around, your fingers are going to produce moisture. That's just the nature of the beast. And that moisture is going to go directly into your liner gloves, which is not good. Uh, because if they wet out, no matter whether they are made of the best new sort of fabric, whether they are woolen, whether they're not woolen, whatever your argument is on, uh, on what sort of liner, uh, liner gloves you should wear, uh, they're going to wet out. And of course, if the moisture is wicked away from your skin and through this fabric, 
where's it going to end up inside these big thick mitts and it's much much harder to get moisture out of these once it's in in particular into the goose down you'll have a nightmare over the stove in the evening in the tent trying to dry these things out even if you stuff the mini nalgene of, full of boiling water inside them to push out heat from uh, push out moisture from within using heat which is a good technique that i do use you're still going to end up wasting loads of time energy and, and stove fuel on mucking around with that so the best idea is to try and keep these dry in the first place and for that reason i use vapor barrier liners underneath these now there are some people who put them on the outside allowing their liner gloves to get a little bit damp but not too bad but saving the mitts i've actually gone for the slightly more i guess you call the slightly more hardcore version where i don't allow any moisture at all to get into these liner gloves whatsoever underneath what i have is a pair of these now these are not latex gloves because latex would rip in about two seconds. These are high quality nitrile gloves, the sort that don't rip even if you give them quite a tug. They've got lots and lots of elasticity in them. And I wear these, as you can see, directly underneath the liner gloves. Does that mean that you get slightly clammy hands? Yeah, a little bit. Um, you can, depending on what the day is like, if there's any wind, what sort of condition you're in, and once you've got your blood flowing, you can air those out during the day and just have a little bit of, of respite. But yes, the truth is, by the end of the day, by the time you get back into the tent again, you will have slightly clammy hands. But importantly, all of your insulation, to make sure that the liner, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the VBL and the liner go all the way up into my cuff, the truth is though that you'll then have dry insulation both on your liners and on your mitts and trust me when you're out for multiple days multiple weeks this is an absolute godsend and it's a very small price to pay that at, at the end of the day your fingers are a little bit uh, are a little bit clammy because they can be easily revitalized with some warmth uh, some dryness in your sleeping bag overnight and maybe with a little bit of uh, skin cream if you're wanting to really splash out so that's my theory and that's the experience that I've had over uh, weeks and weeks and weeks of use with this system and I've still got, well, 10 fingers, 8 fingers, 2 thumbs. Uh, I've not had any frost damage on them um, and I find that they are still functional even on difficult days. This is not a difficult day, but on days when there's a wind, days when it's 10, 20 degrees colder than this, I really, really appreciate having this system. What we'll now move down to are my boots. And I've pretty much gone for, for a similar system inside there, similar-ish. What I don't have is plastic or nitrile rubber against my skin down there because otherwise you'll get chafing and rubbing, which is definitely not what you want. But what I'll do now is show you what's going on down there. First of all, thank you to James, my teammate. He's, um, he's now zoomed off back to the UK, but I'm actually borrowing his skis here because uh, my ski bindings had a slight error on them and I wanted to uh, fix them up properly before using them again so I will send my royalty check directly to James thank you again um, but what I'm going to do now is take off these bindings clip them out there we are we're free inside here oh this snow is quite deep this is why we wear skis um, inside here what I have is my boot system as you can see strangely enough because it's a pair of boots these laces are not the ones that come with these baffin I think these are Baffin Icebreakers, they're the minus 70 rated um, series, so that's not the very coldest minus 100, and it's not the much smaller minus 40s, it's the series in the middle. Anyhow, I don't like their laces, and so I've replaced them with my extra long orange, of course, uh, polyester ones, which are really good, if I can actually undo them, yes I can. I tend to double knot them, and then fold them away it's always good to have a bit of extra length anyhow there we are and I can undo these the gaiters built in right now this is going to be the tricky bit I'm going to try and show you what's going on inside here right that wasn't very dignified but I've managed it so here we have uh, outside of my trousers these trousers actually go on inside these boots but I have another pair of salopettes which go right round the outside of the boots it doesn't really matter which way you do it as long as everything's done up properly but if we unzip this here you'll see another VBL so this is my this is my uh, my base layer my standard uh, full-length base layer and then these are my thick socks my thick knee-high socks inside these socks I have a VBL this is actually 
a hippo sack and I've been going through every single iteration of plastic bag I can possibly find, custom made ones, uh, um, uh, Cuban fiber, which I think is now uh, branded uh, Dyneema, all sorts of different types of ways of doing things. But then actually the best ones I've found are um, tall kitchen bags made by hippo sacks, easily available in Canada. I'm not sure how easy they are to get elsewhere. But anyway, they're stretchy, they're waxy, they don't hold e easily. And they're of course completely impermeable to vapor. And if I, if I slide these off, you'll see that underneath, oh, I have my liner sock, there we are, which will be getting, again, very slightly clammy, but it's so thin that at the end of the day, that really doesn't take very long to dry out, either over a hot Nalgene or even over the stove. Anyway, this is the system that allows me to keep uh, moisture from my feet, which will definitely generate during a hard day of hauling and it'll stop any moisture getting into this thick insulating sock. That's vitally important. And even more importantly, the liner of the boot, which I'll show you in a second. Again, it's not the Baffin liner that they come with because they're like sponges. They, they take up moisture like no tomorrow, both from inside and outside. Um, but what you don't want is to get that liner all iced up because it'll take you forever to dry that out. That did not happen. Before I place my feet back into my boots, I'll just show you uh, if I can. These are the, the Intuition Mucklook liners, which I use. There we are, I'm not gonna take them out completely, um, but these must not get damp. They absorb an awful lot less, less moisture than the original Baffins, but they're absolutely, oh, it's got a little bit of stuff above my, a little bit of snow above my sock there, which is not what you want. Luckily, because it's dry snow, that uh, brushes off nice and easily. So that is why multi-day cold weather travellers should integrate vapour barrier liners with the normal caveats that the rest of your routine needs to be excellent. They are not a miracle cure. And here's a clip of me creating an assortment of pointless scenic thousand yard stairs. But wait, the principle of a vapour barrier liner can be utilised yet further. Outkit kindly stitched me together a pair of little zip pouches inside my soft shell jacket. The lining was a heavily waterproof nylon and that's to keep perspiration away from electrical contents that need my body warmth. In one, a voltage regulator and a switch box to run my head torch and two USB gadgets. In the other, a custom 12 volt lithium ion phosphate battery pack I made. Very neat. Bye.